I'm feeling at some trouble. I'm feeling at a part of me it's not in me. The pain that I feel, I'm buzzed up strong. I could ask myself, "Would um do I know um I need to ulele my cousin?" I'm sending so many more. A grieving sower to mother. Gidiboni Malema never imagined that Ndando's visit on Tuesday would be the last. Ndando left that night for his father's house and while en route was allegedly assaulted by police. The injured 23-year-old arrived at his father's home where he died in his bed on Sunday. Kiriboni says she just wants justice. She does not want money. She just wants the truth and that she's speaking up for other parents who do not have the opportunity to speak up for their children. She says her child lies quiet in the mortuary. Her child was not sick, she says, and he had only become ill after he was beaten up. She says she wants justice even for the next person and that those police officers responsible she says must know they took the life of her son Ipad says it has received the case for investigation. We did receive the alleged um, uh, beatings by the police in Soweto, Zola Naledi area of a 23 year old male. And uh, we received the case. Uh, we are investigating murder case against the suspects. At this point in time, uh, we don't have much to say, but uh, our investigations are ongoing. As the alleged heavy-handedness of the police and the army during the lockdown continues to be questioned, he was part of me. Another family demanding answers. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News. Good evening, everybody. My name is Andy Lemitam. And I'm tonight in this program that we do every Sunday, this is probably the fifth installment of Blacks Can Be Racist Conversations. And I have tonight three brothers, Comrade Sepang, Comrade Aza, and will be later joined by our brother Tumi Mohorosi. The topic tonight is art, culture, and revolution. Art, culture, and revolution. So before we go on, I want to, uh, oh, brother Tumi is here. I see brother Tumi has joined us. So what, what I'm gonna try to do, uh, before we even move, you know, uh, I must just maybe even say that I am very excited to have these brothers with us here tonight. That these are brothers that I know, these are brothers I admire, their work, their commitment. Um, in fact, I consider myself a bit of a groupie when I look at what they do and um, the output of their work for us as black people. So I'm just gonna ask my brothers, just at the beginning, just to greet people so that they see who is online. Aza, my brother. Just say hello to the viewers so that they can hear your voice. Tovela uh, Maafrika. My name is Aza Mpotinyiko Mpaho Kimukoni Kimwanamu. I am part and parcel of this soil, the seas, and the mountain, and the airspace. I'm a musician an Africanist, cultural activist, and uh, I'm a, a lover of black people world over. Kalevo. Kalevo Kledna. Brother Tsepa. Dimeri Shab Sha. Tawela Vaga Reshu. Kidna Tsepang Ramoba. Kuitiani. Kidna Tawya Mutsu Eta. Sita Losa Pudilikho. 
eh dai ke mo Afrika mo golo ke rata Afrika ka pelo ya ka moka le di kharatsa tsa yona ke ya di country ka moka tsa Afrika ke thuta setso sa gona le go ape ya eh le malemi ya bona eh na ke ke artist artist ya me creator eh ke di amino eh ke di anthongwe le ngwe e leng gore it has to do with art ke le bo thank you Brother, how are you doing? First of all, my brothers and big brother, uh, we are sending love to you. How are you doing in Africa? How are you doing in Africa? I'm going to talk about Easter and I'm a creator and most importantly, I'm a lover of black people. Yeah, bless. Eh <laughs> so, my brothers, you're welcome, and I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased, as I say, I'm very happy to have you. Unfortunately, we've lost two of our other panelists, Brother Slasher, he's not well, and uh, I just called, got a call, uh, fairly disturbing, also uh, comrade um, Zaya. There seem to have been some kind of, you know, you know, black situation where black people are just being aggressive, and uh, I hope mm. he's well. Yeah, you know, you know, we are the black condition, the black condition. Mm. Yeah, man. And so, you know, I mean, f firstly, comrades and brothers, I was so I'm excited that we are doing this thing, but at the same time, I must confess that there's some heaviness uh, in this topic. And remember, this topic is generated from the uh, uh, this publication that I have done, Blacks Can Be Racist, and I'll, I'll go mm. into into some of. Uh, the specifics of, of this. But I think I do want to start by saying we live in a very frightening, dangerous, and deadly world today, globally, for black mm -hmm. people. It is, um, it is a place where I feel very strong that we're being subverted, and subverted by even the language and categories that we use to express what's going on. And, and I think that is then a sense on my part that maybe the arts, you know, cultural forms of expressions may have a better sense to capture or to uh, be truthful to what is happening to black people. Um, the name George Floyd, we know, has electrified the world. It has heightened activity, but also their betrayals and their pitfalls. And I'll come back to some of these betrayals and pitfalls which already are there. Um, one of the pitfalls is how this memory is being used. This, our brother Floyd, murdered by the American system. How his memory has been used to mute local abuses, domestic abuses of violence, the murders that goes in a domestic national spaces, all of a sudden, even our governments are activists against racism. Governments that continue to murder our people. We see these big marches which are joined by bodies, white bodies, which are direct beneficiaries of racism. So there is, it seems to me, a very dangerous situation from this point of view where a resistance is happening, but it is being co-opted and used against black people. How do we craft a response as black people which is resistant to being co-opted uh, by our enemies and used against us? So I wanted to start there by recognizing very, very clearly as part of this resistance to memory and, and erasure, particularly of the local uh, black uh, struggles, black uh, murders by our new colonial anti-black states, just to do a roll call. In South Africa, since the, the lockdown, more than 10 people, black people have been murdered. More than 10, but nobody is keeping the, the names. Nobody is keeping the images. The burden of this murder are left to the families. 
we have literally leave this to the families, right? So tomorrow there's another march to the American embassy. We have not done anything about making sure when we remember what happened to brother Floyd, we don't do it in such a way that we forget what is happening to us. How do we make sure that we, we remember and honor without uh, erasing our own immediate situation of the same, same mass matter. And this is the place in my view of art and culture, how perhaps these mediums can be more truthful. Let me just do the roll call of, I have only been able to get six names of over 10 people who've been murdered since this lockdown. And I want to call those names out. We have Collins Koza, we have Sibusi So Amos, we have Pietras Migos, we have Adorno Emmanuel, we have Ndando Malema, we have Nkosinati Villagasi. These are the six names that I could get, which are part of a large number of people who have been murdered, but nobody's keeping a tally in South Africa by the South African state. You know, Milan Kundera says, the struggle that is Comrade Sibusiso, Amos, um, that is Ndando, Singasa, Singasa, okay. Um, I think the mother is Malema. And that boy is only 23 years, 23 years. That is Elma Motumi. Collins Koza. Adani Emmanuel. Pietras Mikels. Those are some of the names of the people that we know have been murdered, including Kosnachi Villagazi. But I was saying, you know, Milan Kundera teaches us that, and I quote, the struggle of men against power, we'll say, and women. The struggle of men and women against power is a struggle of memory against forgetting. Don Matera responds by saying, memory is the weapon. The point is, how we organize memory is important because we can, re we can remember use remembering to do the same project of forgetting. So my brothers, just going, coming back to the text, part of this problem, which I hope somehow, to what you do, <laughs> to your work, you're communicating some of this incommunicable, difficult position of being black in the world. Let me just say, in the essay, Blacks Can't Be Racist, right at the beginning, this essay is 10 years old, and this is the 10th reprint. Right at the beginning, I explain how once I had made the decision, after I'd made a request to submit, um, a request to file a submission at the public hearings organized by the South African Human Rights Commission to discuss a complaint by a white journalist against the Forum for Black Journalists. That was in March, 2008. I descended into a depression, and for days I could not locate, could not locate the source of my anguish. Later in the same paragraph, I was, I was trying to work out a, a way to construct the submission in a manner which would make sense. And it occurred to me just then that the source of my depression was twofold. First, I was hit by the utter powerlessness of the conscious black in South Africa today. That is 10 years ago. The South African human rights hearings on the Forum for Black Journalists happened at the same time as the University of Free State racist incident. Now you remember the racist incident was our parents in the University of Free State were actually being given, were being fed, force fed shit and other things by white kids. That was what was happening at the University of Free State. That incident, which occurred while reports of farm workers' abuses, including the ill treatment of black children, continued as before within the deplorable yet normalized conditions faced by blacks. I listened to the radio and heard a lot of apologies, apologia by well meaning people. However, these unhelpful responses to the continued assault on the black body and soul were compounded by a sad and suffocating realization that blacks cannot trust language 
to communicate their black suffering. We can't rely on existing concepts to speak our black pain. My depression was wrought by the realization that language actually subverts, restructures, modifies, blunts, betrays, and mutes our collective suffering. This is a suffering which we endure every day through racial microtransgressions, which are occasionally heightened by overt, gruesome acts of individual racism. It became clear to me that my submission couldn't do justice to the underlying motivation to come before the South African Human Rights Commission and try to speak about the unspeakable pain of being black, of being black. Black pain lies in the deep recesses of the incommunicable. It exists in the realm of the dead. So how can it be heard? That is uh, how that that right at the beginning of that essay, I go into this difficulty of, I have taken a stance, I want to talk about black, the black pain, but this, I am being failed by language. And, 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 and in fact, this fail had led to my, to my depression. Now, I do want to argue that quickly, my one other point is that we need to ask the question, what is the place of art and culture in contemporary struggles today? In the world which I have described as dangerous, deadly, with language failing us, what is the place of art and culture in this struggle for black people? I'm just thinking, and we all know the, the, the story of Fela Kuti. He pays, he pays heavily. He pays even with the life of his own mother, Fela Kuti. Gugi writes from, the, from prison, right? His, his, his writing is costly. He wants to speak the black truth, but he pays heavily for it. Writing, literature, music, as weapons of struggle are costed to the, to the artist. Christopher Okigbo, the guy who falls in, in the battle of Biafra, a beautiful poet. We know this from our brother Luingosi, you know, when he describes this, this brother. Pablo Neruda of Chile is another one who, a poet of love, actually, but who enmeshes his life in the revolution of his people. So again, there we see attempts by cultural workers to use, a, who uses that expression, I think, to say, you are cultural workers uh, producing this work for the people in confronting oppression. So the question then becomes, today, how do we make sense of this world? And what is the role of arts and culture? And let me conclude by saying, there was a brother in the SABC called Shaudi uh, Motswenin. He mentioned 90% local content, and he became a laughing stock. Not just by the misguided middle classes, but even by artists. So today we see with a situation where artists in South Africa are part of the excluded black artists in a situation where we're talking billions of rents which are available under this COVID-19, but artists are not being taken care of, black artists specifically. The disposition continues. That raises the question in my conclusion, can artists, black artists just be black artists or Black artists are black before they are artists. But I took an open mic. Um, we, will, we will take any brother who is moved by the spirit, move first, and then we will allow everyone else to chime in. You can respond to what I'm saying. You can introduce a new topic. But they are, is wide open, this black wound. How do we deal with it? Uh, uh, go to me first. Yeah, no, big brother, that's the young one. I think I must go first, you know, let the... <laughs> <laughs> you no, <laughs> no, take a big bro. I think now, now, now um, um, for the past three years, I've really been having a serious problematic with the idea of the arts. Um, and I'm trying to think particularly when we think about this black pain as this black abyss and the, 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 the problem of representation, right? 
And I mean, you've alluded to it into your essay and you, you really went into it. But I think we are facing a problem when the, with the arts themselves um, are being used as a mode of sort of like trying to represent this uh, irrepresentable sort of like pain that is always constantly being visited on the blackboard. So I think these sort of like uh, politics of representation are sort of like complicit in the blindness and the violent sort of like apparatus um, that makes art itself commodity or your another idea of even having a voice. Um, so somehow um, this idea of having a voice is preconditioned on some kind of uh, idea of being visible, you know? So again, uh, you know, this artist who then sort of like is able to sort of uh, compress within a song or within a poem, the, the suffering of black people becomes problematic also at that level, just in a sense of how does, how does one speak of sort of like this incoherent, uh, uh, you know, horror um, that, 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 that really sort of like is a, one can explain through the rational thought. So I mean, I, I, you know, so art comes in with the whole attempt to go poetic, uh, but what happens when the, the poetic itself fails to articulate uh, the pain that is felt on, on, on flesh? You know, so I mean, I think blackness and the sort of like idea of this never ending pain, um, art fails, or rather I, from, from my point, music fails, but I think that failure is important to see that uh, there needs to be more than that's done other than sort of like uh, trying to sort of like capture this thing that is really impossible, you know, through the sonic or through, through, through literature or, so, I mean, I think that those failures are important uh, to sort of like, uh, to show that uh, more needs to be done beyond um, trying to create these uh, sonic theories or son sonic sort of like encapsulations of, of the pain itself, so I think we are we are at a serious time where we should where, where we should think um, hard and do more, just in a sense of uh, what is it that we're doing and what it, what is it that we really want to see, you know, um, change because clearly the sonic thus far has failed us. Uh, so I think they do it, yeah more. We need to think more and hard. Uh, well, that's just my. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, you're a mute leader. To me. Am I talking to you or what? Can you hear me? Yeah, well, 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 well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what I wanted to talk about was um, we, we, we mentioned Angela, uh, brother Ublejika, uh, are, uh, are, you, are you black first uh, before, before you're an artist? Uh, definitely, for me, um, having experienced uh, being an artist uh, everywhere uh, in this world is that everywhere, Everywhere you are go, every, everywhere you go, you you are you are black first, and then uh, uh, the most important the most important thing is that after you are black, for for me, uh, you are South African again. It's, it's you are black, and then you are South African, and then you are an artist. So um, when when I I think actually uh, as 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 we mentioned that. Uh, Ushaudi wanted to make 90% uh, South African music. It's because I don't think South African is uh, South Africa is has has any artist artist uh, uh, industry anyway. So I think maybe uh, the people that didn't want 90%, they were scared that the artist artistry would 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 come up because if the artistry would come up. It's not. It's not really a, a simple thing to be an artist because you need to have uh, the talent first, and then you need to have the eye, the creativity, the everything, and you need to have the practice. And you know, you, you need to know if you're an instrument uh, a, a player, you need to know the instrument uh, very well. 
So I think if that happens in South Africa, that we take that seriously, uh, there's a lot of people that won't be artists today. Um, so uh, 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 Tina, uh, uh, the people that take time and uh, we are talented, we, we need to suffer. We, we are suffering because it's, it's very hard to actually uh, be an actual artist. So, and we are the one, the reason why we, I think we are put down is because we are the ones that have the voice. So we are the ones that know what to say and what to do in terms of what's happening in the world and what's happening in our country in terms of uh, 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 the racial issues, especially. So that's why when I'm at a, 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 a show, like I was once at a, at a show in, in Mabone and I was playing there, I went with some of my friends and you know, it was a party, it was you know, one of these parties and I was about to DJ, uh, Malum Kulket was DJing, it was a big party, you know. Um, after Malum Kulket DJs, I'm about to DJ and then the party was raided by cops. And funny enough, it was white cops in, 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 in Mabone, in town. So I was surprised by why is it white cops in town? And they came to raid the place and apparently it's because the party didn't have a liquor license. And then the, the, the cops took the guys that uh, were doing the party. It was white guys, two white, white guys were doing the party. It was a pretty big party, you know. Um, they took the two white guys and they took myself as well. And I was surprised why they taking me because it's not my party, I'm just DJ. So they took me, they put me in handcuffs and um, there's some lady whose father is my lawyer, actually, a white lady uh, who was fighting to, with the cops, like, why are you taking Sepa? Why, what did he do? Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, they, they, they left her alone. And then there was a, a lady, Munchal. Munchal Sanele, she's an artist as well. Uh, she, she also fought, like, yo, why are you taking Sepang? And then they took her as well. So they put us in the car, myself and Munchal handcuffed, and the two white guys were not handcuffed, and then we went to the police station. And then when we got there, where they were doing all this paperwork uh, to get us arrested, to get us in the cell, and uh, the guys that were at the police station, they asked, hey, what's, what's going on? And then I said to the guys, uh, these guys arrested me. I don't know why they arrested me. I was handcuffed and, you know, uh, uh, these guys are not handcuffed. And I really don't understand. And then the guy was like, are you suggesting that it was racial? It, 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 that's what it looks like. And the cop started beating me up in the police station. Uh, started beating me up and I told them that I mean, I'm an artist, I was just playing there. That's what I was there to do. So, you know, it's, it's very painful that uh, to not be, like, I mean, I'm, I'm powerless in that situation. I'm, I'm, I'm very powerless. And uh, the fact that that happens in my country and I have situations, like, I mean, I can deal with situations happening like that in another country. Like, I mean, in the US, uh, we, we, we experience a lot of problems like that where, you know, we get arrested all the time. We, we they need our passports. They, they do this and that. But in your own country, it's very painful. You know, it's 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 a pain that you know you can't even you can't even explain. You know, like uh, that you you are you are hopeless. Even your your brothers are are doing this to you. Like I mean, that guy beat me up just because I said I'm I'm handcuffed and these guys are not handcuffed and it's their party. They're the ones that don't have a, a, a liquor license. And then I was, I was detained. I slept the night. The guys filled in some forms and they left. They left. Um, so it's the reality that we are facing here. And nobody, I mean, I, I think, I mean, sometimes we say that maybe the politicians don't know. I really think they know. I just think, I, I just think, uh, I actually don't think anything. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why we have to be treated like that in a country that I believe that it's our country. 
And us as black artists, even when we go to, like for instance, if I go to a, a conference or a festival, whatever, in, a, in another country, even other African countries, they come there with everything because they were subsidized by the government and they were given things. Oh, oh we, we go to South by Southwest. South by Southwest is like, a, they don't pay. You pay for your everything. So as uh, 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 South African artists, we always get there with nothing, with our own money, blah, 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 blah. And the whole world goes there with a, a subsidy and everything. And uh, uh, you get there and then you meet a guy from Ghana and you're like, hey, the guy from Ghana is like, yeah, no, my, my, I'm here for two weeks. Uh, my, my country is paying for everything. Uh, they gave me sound system. They gave us a stage. They gave us everything to showcase. So that's another problem that we are, we are uh, as South Africans fa uh, face. That's why I'm saying we are black and then South African and then we are artists. Thank you. Hey, my brother, thanks. Hey, my brother, thanks. I think we'll come back to, to some of the insights that uh, you are sharing with us. Uh, the weight of blackness is a, is a debilitating, debilitating one, actually. Um, brother Aza. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm Africa. You know, um, I think that the the notion of blackness uh, in all its forms uh, cannot be imagined outside of a, a particular spiritual weight and and gauge. You know. Um, are the are the soul of 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 a negro is is like an artifact you know um so there's there's a sort of um a spiritual struggle even before we come to uh the the struggles of you know, um, being black bodied, uh, there are spiritual um, warfares and 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 template of struggles that has got to do with the very notion of godliness that is within the identity of being black bodied. Therefore, being black bodied becomes. Um, a manifestation institution of uh, actualizing um, the the divine phenomenon. So, I think the agenda of our oppression is centered around the disruption of allowing ourselves or acknowledging ourselves from the divinity of the absolute godliness within us because it is within the black existence where divinity kursidimu is crystallized within the black existence so the biggest contention uh, even beyond you know um, the political and the social and the psychosocial and all of um, you know uh, uh, um, you know <clears throat> is really uh, the oppressor is fighting the essence of our divinity. It's just beyond the black skin. It's at the soul level um, because our oppressor uh, is fighting against the, the dominion that comes with Sidi Musaruna. And that is why even in the slave fields, uh the you know the oppressor would you know to 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 the the, the the black woman you know sleep with her during the night but not for the purpose of anything but for the purpose of trying to reach to the soul yeah this slave you know 
So once we can understand the power within this identity of blackness, we understand that it is being black is being godly or being black is being God. Let me put it that way. So um, if you if you operate from that understanding, uh, you are able to deduce certain cultural and behavioral nuances that communicate this, uh, 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 you know, divine superiority. And you'll understand what the biggest struggle is to try and relegate that divinity to a point of actually um uh, you know it's, it's actually trying to subdue it but in a way you're trying to refine it into a form of nothingness uh you know so the everything the, the greatest tool uh whether be it you know at the psychological level you know like when biko alludes to the fact that um you know to the mind you know the mind of the oppressed you know, as a tool for the oppressor. What is actually reaching out to is the fact that if your position, if your position of self-awareness from a divine standpoint is misconstrued, you will always operate from a relegated position. And you can be easily manipulated into thinking that there is a better arsenal outside of who you are. And Uzohamba Uzula Zula, you know, where else the, the greatness of who you are is actually in self-acceptance. Because within, when you discover who you are, when you discover the beauty of who you are, you discover that, in fact, there's no need for me to search for any God outside of me. And anything that looks like you is godly. And how you treat yourself, you will treat yourself, you walk as a God, because that is our this part of our cosmology. Uh, if you look at Egypt, if you look at Mapungubze, if you look at any of our cosmology, you realize that our premise is actually God oriented, but from within, not from without. So it is not about uh, pilgrimages, it is not about rituals, it's not about this, but it's about actually self-actualizing in the everyday type of life. And this is crystallized and institutionalized at the family level to say the greatest, uh, 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 um, uh, um, um, how can I say, the, the greatest acceptance and the greatest excellence of this, you know, black, divinity is in me being actualized at the family level because if i become a better person or a better black person at the family level i become indispensable i become this is the glorification of the black existence and this is before we even come to an art, you know, you're speaking of the language, the language that we can use. Now, the, la the voice itself is not an organic material. It is, it comes as a form of a negotiated phenomenon. But even before we get to a voice, the voice that we use as a tool for our liberation, uh, before we could know how to speak as African people, we knew how to dance. We knew how to use the, the, the height of a, of a cow and the tree trunk as a voice. We knew how to stamp our feet. We knew how to clap hands. We knew how to breathe, how to walk, how to sit. You see, and these are part of the, 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 the essentials of grow, when you grow up, they literally teach you how to sit. And that is why our women and our men, are sit, they, we sit differently. And they teach you how to sit. You know, the whole posture thing that is being popularized today, you know, they teach you how to breathe. 
The whole Eastern meditation, yoga, where people are being taught to breathe, is what we do, Tina, in our, in our cultural premise. You know, how to speak, when to speak. You know, we, we get taught of is to so to say, this is not, this is just a manifestation of who you are. You know, to say that when people deal with you, they're not dealing with you as an individual because you are never alone. And that is why when we greet each other, we never say Saubo, we say San Bonani in the plural form because we acknowledge that you are not an individual entity, but you are surrounded. There's a collectivity in who we are. Our identity is always about, you know, communal existence, so to speak. So, so without even going furthermore, I think um, the black struggle is only a struggle when it is defined outside of the the simplicity of the blackness, Yakuma Haying, you know, where we come from. Because there we 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 don't even have uh, the, the the fancy thing of trying to make it like yeah you know our 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 our, our blackness is distilled in in fact the so-called Ubuntu you know you Ubuntu is is something that is you gain it, you know, and it is centered around behavior. So it's as if you qualify to be a human being. Not everybody is a human being. In fact, when you behave in a certain way, you know, but hey, asim, asim right? you know what I mean? But when you behave in a certain way, Barry, um, uh, your behavior, Barry, una libutu, una and by speaking of seriti, we speak of the so-called, the West will call it shadow, but we call it, uh, it's your, your aura, you know? Because other things about who we are are just manifestations, you know? But Botuwaruna, the art of being godly is in being African, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the black consciousness, it's not something that should be understood as a, an abstract phenomenon. So that we can dissect black consciousness. No, black consciousness kebutu. You know, Ronaldin tuongo barke ma itseho. Ugu tu uzpata ganjani, kulma ganjani nabantu. That is black consciousness. I thank you, my lady. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Aza. A lot will come back to this, but there is an item. We have, I, we have artists here. We're gonna, we're gonna take a piece by Brother Tsepan Nonyan. Thank you. 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece, our brother uh, Sepang. You know, I have listened to this piece before, but I actually uh, haven't assimilated um, some of the themes that are running out. Now I was just thinking, wow, actually, I've never thought, and the actual Dipila Mosha Ping, and then there is a, a almost um, equality of. Um, representation in this too and i mean now you know dealing with this difficulty in this country in this world where are not considered in the same way i mean it look like it is our inspirational proposition because and there seems to be symmetry but in reality now i'm thinking well it's a beautiful piece but it's I've never thought about this before. Thank you, Brother Tsepeng, for that, uh, for the, for that really um, uh, inspiring piece, which I think can generate um, serious conversation. And now, when everybody else uh, chimed in, if you have any, you know, insights uh, provoked or invoked by uh, that piece, we, we please, please, please do so. Say something if um, you think... Um, it might be useful. I just want to go back to some of the uh, issues raised. To, Brother Tumi raises the issue of failure, failure of representation in the arts. There is some kind of despondency. There's some kinds of saying the arts are failing us. The arts are failing to represent us. Um, what does this mean? But at the same time, there's a tension because I feel like uh, Brother Tumi is saying, while there's failure, there is also an openness for more to be done. Uh, is this more the same in the direction of failure or something completely different? Because you're working with failure here as a productive um, way of thinking through the problem that we are facing as black people. And you know, for me, just very uh, superficially, I, I'm just thinking if the, if the sonic, if you say the sound and, and, and this kind of representation are failing us, does action, concrete action um, serve us? An example, Artists in Pretoria, for instance, uh, and, and everywhere else, occupy spaces. They transgress into property, for instance, taking a house. But we have seen that often taking a space, often that is a precarious occupation. Often it will come into confrontation with real power. It will be smashed. Often it cannot be managed by artists themselves. Um, so 
even if it is an, a successful occupation, it is just for maybe me as an individual artist, but it, what does it mean for the city? The city is still not in our hands. The country is not in our hands. So even in this trading, and I'm not, sure, I'm not suggesting this is what you're saying, um, a, a concrete action from um, artistic expressions, it seems to me that we're still sitting in the same position of failure. So I just want you to, to perhaps chime in there when, 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 whether, can we more? What is more? Can we do more working with failure? Um, you know, people, I mean, I think this is like the, the, the big question. And then also just to raise, um, I'm thinking the, the failure of the performative and, and I, and I, and I want to use the word performative to, to sort of like include all means of action. So somehow even the performance of stage, it's seen as a particular doing. Right, so already in that mode, there's a particular doing, and then we can translate all these things to, to maybe actual protest, you know. But I, I'm also trying to think that if, if this actual doing is trying to recuperate the 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 or to make better or to reform the the, the situation of blackness, it 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 is working against itself. And when I'm thinking sort of like working with failure is sort of like thinking how then to sort of like agree that that this performative nature of ours is not achieving the freedom that it's sort of like you know they say black music is freedom music but i'm trying to think every time i'm listening to nina simone i'm sort of like taken back into the black abyss so even at that moment there is no moment of the transcendence or of the or of the sort of like to represent that black pain so what i'm trying to think of really about how how, how this failure can be productive is how do we not want more? How do we not want uh, to, to, to recuperate the world and let it accommodate us? And you know, I'm thinking that now as well, just with the US sort of like protest, uh, this sort of like, it's a performative thing of wanting redress, right? But it doesn't sort of like accept that this, the, the system itself has failed. So the, 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 how, how does one sort of like, you know, in the, in the sort of like uh, clinical Afro-pessimist way, stay in that hold and, and sort of like, you know, and, and I mean, at, at some level, this, this, is, this is holding on to the monstrosity of, of, of the existence of, as an artist and as an activist, I mean, we've been sort of like trying to activate spaces for a long time in and around Pretoria in Johannesburg, but we always sort of like met with the structural failure that venues themselves close um, people themselves getting strained, artists are, starf are starving, their houses are getting evicted. Uh, yet again, there's this sort of like great surplus of great art that comes at the cost of their own lives, you know. Families are breaking up. And, and, and there's all these sort of like real sort of like concrete things that, that as, as, as a community of people that are saying that we are, we are striving for freedom, um, we sort of again become co-opted in the very same machine of commodity that sort of like uh, is the one that determines your value. And I mean, if, if, if then that is sort of like um, uh, what we are saying, then, then this failure is living with us even at that level of sort of like uh, activism. So how do we sort of like reconcile these moments and how do we speak to each other seriously without sort of like jumping into the transcendental, you know, uh, jumping into sort of like the, the, the poetic and, and the beauty of, of it, you know. And I mean, again, the, the aesthetic itself is racialized. You know, but as I was speaking about sort of like, um, uh, we're fighting a, a spiritual warfare. I'm thinking about that thing in sort of like the sublime, the sort of like the Godhead itself as represented from a particular geospace already assumes a particular privileging of another people. And we find ourselves in the dark continent that is without all these things that are sort of like aesthetically beautiful. We occupy a space that is ugly. So how then do we speak about the art as the space of beauty while it's been sort of like been occupied by this derelict sort of like being or this being that is this, this non-being, you know, in the Fanonian sense. So how, how then do we sort of like, um, away from allowing sort of like black pain to be used as, a, as another commodity within, within an industrial framework, how do we speak about the work that we produce outside of, outside of um, 
uh, being seen and 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 what does this work do itself with with outside of being co-opted into the very same sort of like spaces that that are there to to discard the idea of blackness itself or use it as a way for pleasure you know um and the, the, as i was also speaking about the idea of like you know uh, the the using of bodies and i mean this is the the whole sort of like libidinal economy of going out to sort of like see the sort of like great black artist speak his pain on stage and somehow you applaud that and you find that beautiful so i mean there's sort of like this really tough relationship that the black arts in particular have with the industry and have with the mode of producing the mode of sort of like creating itself is such a thing uh, is such a sort of like paradoxical moment within the black art because of the historical idea of what uh, you know production is when thinking about the black body and now all of a sudden you you are obliged as an artist to produce and reproduce the black pain through 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 your music so you're not even offered transcendence in that moment of art you are plunged back into the abyss of 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 the black pain you know Charlie Parker said if you don't if you don't live it you can't play it so there's somehow that that to be able to articulate this moment of strife one has to be living it and and this is a moment of sort of like uh, anti art because art is this moment of transcendence but then here you are as a black body you find yourself back in the space of sort of like black pain you know so i mean i think this is a paradox that we are it's a, it's a very difficult it's a very typical kind of um, you know situation you find yourself there because in some ways one feels like there is this hopelessness right that wh whichever direction we move we are not going to achieve that which we need to achieve so outside of explosion it doesn't seem like you you are suggesting to us that there's productivity in the in the cultural work itself perhaps i am oversimplifying it but i think we have to really seriously work through um your your conception of failure right um let us uh, go to brother Aza. brother Aza, also when you 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 do this if you have any insights on the i mean i mean it's still you know ringing in my head but you you are, we're gonna i'm going to interrupt you because when we're gonna have to go to questions is good you'll say something and then we're gonna give brother Tsepang and then we're gonna go to some comments hey well you know uh, i think uh, in in the spontaneous response to the union uh, I don't know much, but what I can tell you is Le Fau Fau. So Le Fau Fau is the uh, Le Fau Fau is the yeah, the atmosphere. The yeah. Yes, the sky, the whatever. Sky. The sky. <clears throat> and the universe. I guess that is where they. That is where these birds fly. You know. So that is where they exercise their their activism, so to speak. You know the. Uh, uh, that's that's where they walk. That's where they, you know. Um, so, our um, story Sashaka, you know, Shaka. When uh, uh, in 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 one of this film, Ebayin thing, you know, Shaka Zulu. There's there's one um, um, where he says, um, I think he was talking to the brother or somebody or the 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 advisor. Urmo ena uri. Uh, yes, you know, um, oh, it was actually the advisor advising him, for him. Um, you know, the, 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 the white people um, will give you, uh, because when you are the king, but you are a king because you walk on this land. If they give you wings, in the sky, you will fall victims of the rulers of the sky. Why one? So, meaning hurry, if you simply got about stay in your lane, you know? So, and can you see a key who is a happy mutavenya activism? I want to tell you about activated. Leona, because if, if, if you, if you are a fighter, uh, you should be inherently a fighter. And uh, you should understand fighting because 
for you to 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 even be alive it's a fight because uh, you know from the time that you were a spam amongst many other spams you had to be the fighting spam in order even to come to be the one that makes it you know so uh, once you understand that you know uh, what uh, uh, that to me was saying in terms of <clears throat> issue yeah, the, the 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 existentialism and the the despair you know of uh, 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 our fight and our discourse uh, right now we are that which we seek to be the issue here is self acceptance and self love because it is within more if tata then immediately hari tata love the self love that we can uh, discover in itself is activating self healing it is nothing to but, but brother 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 Aza, let me interrupt you is it possible to self heal in the slave plantation in other words this idea of if i love myself and i'm i'm i'm, I'm in, in the concrete situation of slavery how is this possible um in the first instance because the institution that controls and over determines my life is is from without so i feel like there's a tension there um maybe in in a half a minute if you were to respond to that because that's what a lot of people i think who, who've been working with what i'm trying to say but the problem was yes spiritually we, we have been attacked and defeated it is not enough to imagine that with self-healing uh would address the the physical problem of oppression hey but i can on to hurry it once once your mind keep you again once your mind uh, uh, discovers the divinity you cannot be enslaved you cannot be imprisoned they can lock you in they can limit you in terms of space in terms of time but you cannot be confined to the wishes of the oppressor because you you have you see love that's what love does you know self-love self is uh, even if they kill you you know you, you are happy to because you, you, you are self-love is the most is the ultimate liberation whereby it cannot be interrupted it cannot be controlled it cannot be subdued you know and i'm not i'm not talking of some far philosophical you know concepts i mean it is literally in the effect of uh, the, the 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 how would we the the weapon of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed Hura hurry the time you are fighting to be free because you understand that you are enslaved is the time that you need to spend investing in self-love because when you love yourself you will not wait for the system to make you a favor you see there's a favor that will bring us to a point where we can even sit in the table and negotiate when we love ourselves when we love ourselves uh, we will recur automatically we 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 get into a position more long hurry we there is nothing that is built outside for us like thing like uh, if you take for example the education system you know if we love ourselves we wouldn't even go to universities when we leave universities in our own homes which are our elders you see what i mean we will not take them and take them into the uh, old age homes we will take them and learn from them we will want to revive and and revisit our old way of doing things and see how we can uh, 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 make them better and advance them and this is for me a, the biggest thing in terms of uh, 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 redressing black pessimism because outside of who we are whatever progression that we make we have already failed it doesn't matter of what from whether it's scientific or whatever but if it is outside of self-love already it is premised on failure thank you my brother brother you know i mean <laughs> Uh, let's, as I say, I mean, I have a new, new appreciation of Nanyana. Now, but you know, in your first intervention, 
you uh, relate this uh, you know, experience of just how our state treats black and white radically different. I mean, when these people organizing a party, your artists, you end up being handcuffed because both of you, the moon child, are black, are, are black people. Um, and then I, I, you know, your allusion to politicians, they must know, but of course, they, they behave as if uh, they don't. Um, it seemed to me that's a, a definitive statement and somehow hops back to, to miss problematic of failure. And the hope, yeah, brother Aza, which uh, again, I think it brings attention there. But I just want to uh, zero in on, on your very interesting relation between 90% and the possibility of explosion of artistry. You see, if that 90% local content was in fact implemented, you would have enriched the quality of our artistic experiences and expressions. And it would have thrown out, up, if you like, um, real artists uh, on the basis of, the, of this support. I imagine in my mind initially though, it would mean that the field is wide open and then real artists, if you like, will then come um, uh, to, to the surface. It's something that we do not think, I don't think with thinking like this, that, that 90% would in fact bring this explosion and richness in uh, our cultural life. But I don't know if you want to say something about that further or any other yeah. point. Really. Yeah, no, that, that point is very important because like uh, here, here in South Africa, if we, if, like in, in Nigeria, they play mostly uh, Nigerian music there in the country. So that's why they have uh, artists, they have artists that are unknown that uh, uh, make a, a proper living in, in Nigeria. So that's what, that's, that's the kind of, uh, in, even in filmmaking, that's, that, that, you know, that's, that's how they do it. And then in, in, in America, there's, a, there's so many radio stations there. Like the, there's like one company could own 50 radio stations. And when, when the radio stations play American music, because they're in America, they, some radio stations are even not popular, but they are in America, so they play American music. So now there's so many artists in America and some of them we don't know. We only know the ones that are like super commercial that uh, they feed us in South Africa. Um, so now in that instance, you have, you end up, when you go to America, you, you, you I mean, we, 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 we lived there for like a couple of years with the Blackjacks uh, in 2008, 2008, 2009. And you know, we have a neighbor, we had a neighbor that used to play a trumpet. Um, it's a guy that played his own music, you know, and he 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 was an artist in the in, in the community. He was the artist in in his country in America, as small as he is, but he was an artist. He had a, he had some songs on radio playing, and he had a, a space of himself somewhere somewhere. So in South Africa, that doesn't exist. Uh, in South Africa, what exists is a, is actually entertainment. Is the entertainment uh, industry, you know. Uh, like today, I was listening to Duduzo. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, Duduzo had this video, which is crazy. Like he was playing a piano on top of a moving car, and at the end, they burned the piano. It's an amazing video, you know. Like if, I mean, what would that video do to uh, South Africans if they played on SABC? It would liberate us all. You know, we'll stop doing all these uh, uh, mediocre things and. But but we can't we can't you know those kind those kind of things we can't do. That's the thing that uh, the system doesn't want to do. They don't want to play those videos on 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 uh, uh, the South African television, and they don't want to make ninety percent. Uh, even w when they made that ninety percent uh, South African music, they were playing old music. You know, they still didn't want to play. Um, uh, our music here. You know, I made it on Africa Day, I made a post that I listened to the radio, I opened the radio, and almost every radio station was playing African music. And it, it's, it was very sad that how well, they play, we are in Africa and they're playing only African music on this day called African, you know, they're playing just African music. And my, on top of that, I was like, there's African music today. You know, there's a, 
there's there's uh, uh, Msaki, there's uh, your Tumim Khorosi, because we have your your uh, Tabanis, you have your Sibusi Lekaba. Why that music is is, is is nowhere actually. Those people, uh, we we are nowhere in the in the in the artist uh, industry, but that little small small anyana corner that we are in if if you liberate that corner uh, my brother it will be chaos in south africa because now it will mean uh, we want quality people will want quality now and there are those people that can afford to 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 to, 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 to get that quality you know we have big people big guns like sony uh, your, your 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 sony's your universal it's very expensive to to record a CBC Lekaba, you know, like it's it's very expensive to, you can ask to me there, it's very expensive to record to me. You have to make all these drums, you have to uh, get into a proper studio, but today's artists, uh, in, in today's uh, entertainers, you can just get in the bedroom and, 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 and have a mic and record and we are finished. You know, there's no money involved in it. So we all we do is we spend money. We spent money to go to school. I went to school. Tumi went to school to study jazz. I went to school to study jazz. It's our parents' money. After that, we have to buy a drum kit. It's very expensive. It's more than 10,000, you know? And then after all, we are in this little corner that where we can't do anything. We are always crying together. So we see the, uh, everybody, you know, we are always crying. We are in the corner. But if they liberate us, for this quality, if they play our music on uh, on radios and if they play our videos there and 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 they show they show us around, they show off. It, it'll be it won't they won't make money. It will be hard for them to to make money because we are the conscious ones. We we know what's happening in this world. We we will we'll, we'll talk to the people. You get what I mean? So basically, basically, what you're suggesting, my brother, is that part of the problem then is this that. The system is not going to allow for art that threatens uh, its interest to flourish. Now, you know, when, when we hear black artists, um, you know, experiences, these are black experiences. It doesn't matter if you think about it. If you are a black academic or black professional, black uh, 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 unemployed, we, we seem to all have. So the question is, it seems to me is that we are not going to respect black art forms until there is actual liberation of black people. I mean, I mean, this story that you just uh, shared with us about how you were treated in a liberated country. And I mean, the despair in your articulation, almost like this is my home, but I'm treated as if I don't belong here. I have no rights in this place speaks to the fact that we are a people who are not free. And I mean, this is the main concern of also the essay around, can the art forms, cultural expression of resistance, assist in doing this thing that to me saying, we need to try to avoid the uh, co-optation of our pain, of, 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 of our attempt to resist into failure, which is being used against us. So. This is the big burden, in my view, which must go to artists. How artists allow us to speak and organize for liberation? So hold that thought. Let's go to some questions that has come through, and let us see if uh, we can just respond uh, to them. All of us will have a, a shout at them. Um, then there is where we're going to play. OK, we're going to go. The questions are going to come. but. Maybe at this point, let's just go to a piece by brother Tumi with uh, Sibusile Taba. And then we'll take the questions. Okay, let's go to brother Tumi's piece. Okay, sure. Let's take brother Tumi's piece.
Thank you, Brother Tumi. And I saw our father, Lififi Tladi, and I was hoping that Otla Refa, Otla La Tela Nyanaska, Otla Le Basitwana, Kahon Neramizin, who is one of you know, the sages of our country. Beautiful, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, and we must thank, there's a brother, you know, who's running this thing in the background, um, Paul. He's doing, I mean, he's really outdoing himself. This is beautiful. We appreciate that. Um, this is, uh, I'm, just, I'm just now, you know, like uh, uh, torn between this heaviness of the conversation around the black condition and also these amazing expressions that we continue to be creative under these uh, uh, difficult uh, situations. What we'll do next is to take some questions uh, which uh, we will come through. But to me, I, let's I say, I was really hoping that the Tlautua is really fifty-thirty. I hope it is a real chance. Let us ask a question. Artists ignore the content or message they are supposed to convey because they are forced by the system to think, to first think food, hence the poetic content rather than black consciousness. So art is produced to eat rather than to speak, to heal to expose, to preserve history, and etc. And then there's another question from Vusim Klaba. Arts and culture is intentionally or unintentionally ignored. It's a massive unemployment industry, particularly to Blacks. Even labor unions don't embrace arts and culture. Let's take the last question. It is from Funzani. He says, love what Ma Africa, as I is saying there, an aspect that often over, is overlooked in black discourse thought, the being of black within the spiritual realm. I'd ask you though, how does the envision that, his, that the spiritual and artists, artistry, most particularly the spiritual, can guide us towards our revolutionary aspirations, so to speak? And how do we bridge the gap between the black artists, activists, and thinkers and work towards more collaborative work? That is a, so we have, we have three questions that, that we can um, respond, we must hopefully respond to. Um, the first one is that, that we, uh, Broto, Broto is making us uh, not to produce art for liberation because we must eat and the, the giver of the Broto is not happy with the, the art that you want to produce that can push what uh, is referred to as black consciousness. Uh, in, in, in a minute, can we each uh, have a, a chime at that one? Buroto, is Buroto the problem? Uh, Tepang, Tepang is, 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 is uh, just a second, Brother Tepang is going. Let's uh, unmute. Let's unmute, okay? Brother Tepang. 
You are fine now. You should go. Hakimutra, Hakimutra, na la mutra. Arimutra. For some strange no, reason, Arimutra. Arimutra. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let, let's go to Aza. Okay, I'm going to come right to Japan. If we're rooted or not rooted, I don't know what's going on. I'm probably going to try to check. Brother Aza? Yeah, no, nothing is very, very, very short and straight to the point. Tabaya uh, Roto becomes uh, a bone of contention because Rubusa Gidi Taila, you know. Rubusa Ki Kuhur, but by the way, Abaiti Silo, Ellis Muhus, Alman Falele, Ellis Muhus, DLT Mutetwa, Demon. Mohus, Mohus, Mohus. So they don't, they don't even own art pieces. They don't know anything. They don't attend. I mean, you know, but by long hurry, they are uncultured. Bona you know. So that's where the problem is. And then uh, that entire thing it makes us long regress in order to have to deal and to mitigate their ignorance and we must tone down and then we must play the cover see and we must do all sorts of things when we go overseas they even give us instructions tell no do not uh, talk too much of uh, the politic you know try to maintain this uh, uh, you know so that you know south africa appears to be uh, progressive so it's 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 all part of uh, the chila very the inheriting cabo na dimuhus babar costa these people ba yeah thank you uh, let, let's hear brad sepang hey, uh, actually uh, i was going to say some things that uh, brother as i said uh, but mostly um, me as an artist like i wanted to say if if nili buroto if nili buroto to me no like ngabe reta di piano di di kom kona no brother andy so as 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 uh, brother uh, as i says uh, we are forced to to tone down or to uh, do covers uh, but we are still we are still there we are still uh, uh, the black checks album is coming and you'll hear it's still the uh, same old same old black checks it has a lot of changes and a lot of rocking guitar there and uh, uh, some six eight and seven eights African and beats. We are still there, my man. So if ni look tabayabu roto, li li di tabateo. Nga me seri kiri adi komu ribina ribina di 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 mapiano anisa. Na resabe resa resabe tami rupa resabe tami rupa de si. But that's a point of resistance in a sense that you say, well, we are not going to be. Uh, uh, controlled by Buroto, but I mean, it's a very difficult proposition. Uh, brother Tumi, mm. do you want to say something about Mutata Baburoto? Yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> it's a, no, it's a, it's a serious one, bro, because I think, I think just also uh, to go back to the pessimistic point of view, uh, these things are inculcated, you know, the arts that we find in the state are, are going to demand of you to pay rent wherever you live, to buy food, <laughs> wherever. So, I mean, we are caught up in a sort of like catch-22 where uh, all forms of work, and I mean, art is, is, is seen as that kind of thing. It's unlike before where, where people could just create and be taken care of, of the community. So this idea of the self that has become individualized within the art world sort of like feeds into the whole notion of capital. So, I mean, then you're going to get like the best awards, you know, the best of this, the best of jazz. So, I mean, already, already like we are, we are sort of like put in a space where it is really against sort of like the principles of, of freedom that we are trying to articulate. So, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a lose-lose, like for me, just in the sense of, of art itself is meant to for this sort of like production of, of art and of food and of security, of, you know, uh, of progress, of upward mobility. And that's the problem, I think, fundamentally. That and I think that, for that. that takes us to the last question. I mean, I've asked for the second question. The last question, uh, its main, uh, you know, message is this. How do we marry art and practical revolutionary practice? Because all our complaints, whether it's Boroto is a, an attempt to recruit us the other side punish art that is transgressive independent 
conscious raising. Gaboroto. Now, nobody's going to get Boroto because the owners of Boroto runs the state, runs this economy, and all that goes with that. An artist will never be, therefore, uh, independent in this sense until the revolutionary process that liberates everyone is enacted. So the question becomes, because, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, there must be some concrete point of action because oppression is concrete. So where is the, 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 the convergence? Or is it enough that I or Aza or Tepang? I must I go into the battlefield. So 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 your work exists outside of the actual battle with the system that creates this alienation that we all all of us are suffering. Or where see this is the difficult. Where is the point of con? Or art is just one front in the in this complex battle, but the, somehow it must be able to feed. The, 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 the struggle. I mean, why is it the Batubaya Tang, Balonelang service delivery, for instance? They well, don't know what your, your art is saying to them, or maybe it's much more subliminal than that. Or must we, and I'm thinking about Miele, for instance, Tamim Miele's, uh, mm, if you like, despair. Despair, mm, mm. you know, when he says, Nati mm. Batlahota di pamphlet, Tamim Ton, Atisa di abstract art. Right. And then when you do that, you stop being an artist. It's like you have got a pamphlet here. So I'm, I'm just wondering. <laughs> the, this, so how can we manage this, this tension? Because we also want to be spirit. Ronaba Africa, when Arian doing the is a song mm. that drives us in the battlefield. Right. But but there's also the way the piano as songs to drive us away from the battlefield. Uh -huh. And that is where the <laughs> most Boroto is going. So how do you bring this? Uh, so that is, that is a question. I don't know if comrades can chime in and, uh, and then see if we can deal with the last question and then we'll have closing remarks. I hope uh, Paul can give us, as we close, a piece from Aza. So yes, uh, Aza, do you have anything to say to that? To that, to that? Yeah, Chant. I think in, in, in all our African cosmology narrative, there's never an absence of art. In even all forms of revolutionary quest and uh, assimilations, art is a constant, you know, uh, phenomenon. Uh, evidently so, even in our uh, recent uh, you know, um, attainment of um, this uh, dispensation. Uh, we have all sorts of analogies that points to arts and its role fundamentally in underscoring and underpinning, you know, um, that uh, liberation struggle. Uh, imagine all the protests, imagine all the rioting where music is muted. I'm only saying music. Uh, imagine if you include theater. Imagine if you, I mean, if you exclude theater, if you exclude dance, if you exclude movement, if you exclude poetry, you know, revolution becomes paralyzed and unimaginable outside of this, um, you know, um, uh, vehicles and, and modes. And so, um, at the forefront of you know the our revolution, uh, we have a very clear uh, uh, drive, uh, you know, championing revolution as if revolution itself, um, you know, is ushered by the arts. And in order to understand this, I mean, we can see it in how. Uh, in our time of despair, when all hope is gone, you know, when our people are murdered massively from left, right, and center, when how Radiwa Makasi, you know, people going to be buried, mass burials, and so forth, uh, uh, art, you know, is the one that carries people. And Rena, as African people, uh, art. Uh, assist us in terms of uh, social commentary. We have 
uh, you know, um, our epic poetry and all sorts of things where art is like that, um, you know, uh, central, you know, social commentary. But even in the, you know, uh, romanticism, um, you know, 18th century, um, you know, epoch in the West, you know, you still have got a borrowing, um, you know, a borrowing of a, 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 a African vibration art that is not even acknowledged, but it is adopted, you know, uh, into, into a, a type of socialization that speaks to a revolution and a socialization of a people's conscience, you know. So, in, in, so all in all, I'm saying that, uh, you know, uh, art is the instrument of our liberation. Art is the very hard drive and, you know, mode of our revolution, without which we have no intercollectiveness, we have no set, um, uh, 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 understanding of revolution. Thank you, my brother. Uh, shall we go? Come, uh, brother Tsepang, do, do you have something to say? We're going to go to Marikana after these comments. Uh, brother Tsepang, if you have something to say on, the, on that question. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, brother Onali, something to say? Brother Itumi? Otherwise, I'm Marikana. No, I mean, I mean, uh, the guy American, but I mean, I think just not fundamentally, I think I'm still sort of like grappling with the idea of this, uh, not even existential, but this moment where the conceptual framework of being black in the world sort of like falls prey to the agency that we have been given to, whether we call it art or, or whether we call it protest. And I think for me, sort of like, uh, as as Bra Azar was saying, Hori, in the African cosmology, these sort of moments of creation have always been there. I think art for me sort of like helps in that sense of creation, but then it means that we need to create new sort of like technologies in sort of like propelling the liberation, you know. So, I mean, I, I, I guess for me at this point, just the, the idea of being under the white sort of like normative gaze, as Cornel West would say, is the problematic of sort of like when we find questions about auto and all these things that then again collapse the very idea of, of what we are trying to do with this sort of like, uh, you know, form of sort of like a struggle. Thank you, Comrade. Let's go to Marigan by Comrade Aza.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you again. Oh, Marikana, you know, I mean, when we started, we, we went to Milan Kundera and Brother uh, Brazinga, Brazinga John Matera, you know, Milan Kundera's quote that says, The struggle of men, and we said women and women against power, the struggle of men and women against power is a struggle of memory against forgetting. Marikana, we cannot forget Marikana. And in fact, if we were a people that remembers, we would probably never have rewarded those who were involved in the massacre of our people in Marigana with the uh, positions of being our rulers. Brother Zinga Matera says, memory is a weapon. And uh, their brother Aza give us an amazing piece on Marigana. Brothers, brothers, we are going now to ask you to give you your concluding remarks before I say goodbye to everyone, and then we will have uh, a piece Bali Fifitladi after our, each of us have a minute. Brothers, this conversation, um, there's a question there, art tends to stand the revolution. Thinking about too much singing and very little swinging, for instance. That is Tanti Nkosi, Tanti Nkosi saying, Guys, we gotta get into swinging. You know, uh, our brother Zim um, Nawana, uh, he says, I sing with a sword, sword, Lirumo, Lirumo, sword, or again, Kichad, King, the one, yes, that one, that one. Tabule. Sabuli, yes, ke sabuli, sabuli. Ke 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 bina ke tswere sabuli di tswane ke ikhel. So we must do a bit of swinging, a little bit of shaking of molotovs, a little bit of looking at the beautiful explosion of of fire. We have dealt with a very complex matter of art, culture and revolution and the questions that it raised for the artists themselves for the big project of our liberation, failure is one of them, but just being black in this situation, also presenting its own challenges, then the spiritual questions that Brother Aza has been inviting us over and over again to. So your brothers, your concluding remarks, uh, and thanks again for participating in this amazing conversation. Uh, let's, let's take them backwards. Brother Aza, I just want to take and then Dr. Felix Okay. Africa, uh, let me thank you for, for the path that we are now assuming, uh, you know, the, the old voice uh, of black consciousness uh, is a beautiful one. I think that uh, it is now, uh, you know, consciousness is rising everywhere now in, in it, it becomes part of the daily, um, thing that we hear even on social media and so forth. And that is the beauty uh, of the struggle. Uh, I think at the center of our struggle uh, lies uh, this uh, question of loving ourselves and how to love ourselves if we have been disenfranchised so much, if we have been socialized to say everything that is black, it is ugly, if we open our dictionaries and we find the definition of black as being something uh, that can never achieve to anything that is beautiful. And these are the lies that have been inculcated uh, in, 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 in our uh, you know, social arsenals. But uh, I think at the end of it all, when uh, the lies are being dispelled, we find the beauty uh, that is being black is in the simplicity of things, you know. Um, you see all these things of being westernized and trying to assimilate into a, a type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, yellow bonism and all of these things. Uh, but the, the simplicity of Huitata is, um, does not require much effort as well. It's a simple thing of uh, even 
going back to our our elders, loving them, you know, getting to hear those stories that reminds us of walking barefoot in the land, uh, planting and eating organic foods, you know, uh, knowing our praise names and all of those things. In achieving those simple things and even trying to trace our family trees, we shall then beginning this path. But we are called to self-love more than anything. Ma Africa kya lebok? Kya lebok le rona tata. Eh, brother Tepa. Eh, nang karato lebok ha? Batu kamu kaba chile di jengmo ki le eh batu ba ki bolela lebona kamu brother Aza, brother Dumi, brother Angela. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I think uh, our struggle is uh, is on. The struggle is on, and it's uh, always on and on. But we are living, and uh, uh, we are doing this thing. Lire barata wasarati raidia reapila raidia mino raidia di atcharena ropila ropila kal until jajile ratamayang rishie something mole fasting go bontsha gore ne re le gona e bile ra ithata ka ge brother aza a tsho go re ithateng e ba tla tseba gore ra ithata ene ra itseba ene re ba di thobe thanks my brother um brother to me um yeah i also would like to thank makhrot manaka just to be in communion with you I think it's a great step in 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 the in the in the move that we are trying to make as as committed to sort of like the idea of black liberation. Uh, but also, I think uh, the conversation has also really uh, helped sort of like made clear sort of like real sort of like hurdles within within the arts themselves in in what we are sort of like working towards. And I mean, just just also the whole idea of co-option into the very same system that is trying to kill us uh, is something that I think um, should be sort of like flagged more within sort of like the operations of the art. Um, and, and I think if we center sort of like black problems first, um, this is how sort of like we get to see things for, for as they are. Because I mean, there's a whole sort of like upsurge of this whole decolonial movement that are trying to sort of like co-opt again the idea of revolution uh, and sort of like dress it up in sort of like uh, black masks. So, I mean, I think we have sort of a lot of work to do and, and I mean, yeah, I'll look to continue. Th thanks, my brothers. I can't thank you more. Um, we are in the middle of the war, we're in the middle of a war and we are under attack, we're under siege. Our responses, are being co-opted, subsumed, turned against us. Um, in all these places, we must look very carefully what's going on. Often our righteous rage is turned against us, against the black agenda. And this front of the arts is culture, is the most, one of the most important fronts which we have to constantly work on, work around to make sure that uh, we, uh, it feeds the revolutionary process. This essay, Blacks Can't Be Racist, part of it was an attempt to get us to think um, about these forms of talking, speaking, thinking Blackness. There you are, get your ebook now. Ebook, literally, once you buy it, it comes to you as a soft copy. You're able to, to read it as an ebook, and it goes for 60 Rand. You will have to upload. Uh, the the Kubo uh, WhatsApp, uh, not rather what's uh, um, uh, what is this thing now? Larking uh, to app that Kubo app, and then you are able to get your book. That is an ebook. In other words, it's a soft copy. The the hard copy, you get it at 150 rand, a pep delivery, pep store delivery. So you will say uh, sending uh, your your order either by Facebook or email or WhatsApp. Pep store will deliver at your pep store in two weeks' time, or the 200 rand is the fastest delivery. For me, it was just one day. One day you pay the 200 rand, you get the following day, they bring it to your door, your home. They bring it 
if you pay the 200 rent, it is almost overnight. At most, it could take three, three days. Get a copy of Black. I mean, these Blacks can be racist. It's one of the most important document which help us to think through the difficult question of being Black in the world. It covers, expands a number of areas. As today you've seen, it generated conversation on the arts. Next week, we deal with June 16. It will be an amazing program. I can't thank these brothers again who spend time with us educating us, feeding our souls and our minds with good things that could help us to think through this black conundrum. Next is Lififitladi Salanghand Funani Dinitanda Nonke Makaya. Bara Africa. Kuala di bodi ke huhu kamanung zebat zebo ya beria zebo baru naba api ba masih kawe api agam rawadi pir. Biar lima orang rawa oba kau lecik musim wadi budi di malam mata labat salah budi budi heba alam eroko ya salah laping langwa nak kusyang aku. Kau fepa mat nunga tuan tebenja si fufu kang wana ngak aku ji kau hape sangwe di mukjaga kau hape la maru kau fisha kau cari tadi amus. O feza gidi bogo pele manong afik. Biale ngana di talama se bulu ke marapwa mimpeng ya di piri. Ba o waji wahu gidi bogo ba pukela di tapi. Ngana ngana ke? Anya matali abo ra kolo kolo mimpeng ya se chapa uto ukone hua te. O ba ne ba o ba i kaula mimpeng ya se chapa sabona ba i chila di pupelo ba feza ba ti melo se gidi se sabo. Rekwa mi kushi ya wanaka miritile wa thalu eti Mathala ja munga meno wa matilile Afrika Kama nzwa ki ipapo la sefapa nung sele rato la hoho Mmeko nyako izori na kwa kia badimu fela Lehe ilu hore ba nababa badimu ke nete fela Nete ko hore hore ba nababa badimu badima kato Rekato wa nababa pifo ka mukivilo wapo ka rafeta rencha na sayi nung kama nala kwa ale Hudia vya no Jauh bawa maruku ke papa rishanel pandalam cina wa makuh. 